Good evening folks, welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight, the 11th of February 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo, this update is sponsored by our major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Folks, on the OCC Weather Centre at the moment, we can see Tropical Low 99S just on the outskirts there of our area of responsibility. That is expected to deepen and push away to the southwest out of our area of responsibility, not coming towards WA. There was some sign that there could be a, a little weak disturbance developing here around the southern parts of Indonesia as well over the next week and we'll, we'll keep an eye on any computer modeling that does suggest that there is a uh, there is a very active shear line or monsoon trough line right along that Indonesian region so it wouldn't be out of the realms of possibility for something to spin up in that region uh, but not expected not expecting it to do so but the possibility is there. Across northern Australia, we have a deepening monsoon trough up here across to the Arafura Sea, extending into the Torres Strait region, extending into the northern Coral Sea, and obviously where the action lies down here towards Tropical Cyclone Tatiana. Further to the east, we also have Tropical Cyclone Winston out off the coast or just to the east of Vanuatu. Across northern Australia in general, we've got uh, a situation where we've got some unsettled weather up across the northern parts of Cape York Peninsula, isolated to scattered showers along the Queensland coastline, and also isolated scattered showers and thunderstorms across the northern top end region. Now, these showers and thunderstorms expected to increase over the next uh, day or so across the northern, northern Territory or at the very least maintain themselves tomorrow as we see a bit of an upper level low feature uh, up here in the southwest part of the territory. All right, let's move on. Let's have a quick look at Tatiana. Looking at the animation over the course of today, we can see Tatiana has a fair bit of uh, punch to hit on the western side of the system. However, the actual low level circulation center is probably just on the southeastern edge there of that uh, rotating mass of convection. Now that means that while Tatiana is not the best looking system you've ever seen, it has managed to develop some really deep convection in a part of the day where we normally don't expect to see deep convection developing. It's got a nice little feeder band coming in here which is pumping in a lot of moisture, but also uh, present in the area is a fair bit of dry air coming through on the western edge and trying to push into the circulation centre. So it's a little bit of a battle at the moment between moist air and dry air. So moist air is winning for now. Taking a closer look at that depth of convection, you can see this grey cloud here uh, showing some very cold cloud heights. And as I say, this is happening at a time of the day where we normally wouldn't expect to see such deep convection in the developing cyclone. So that means that overnight tonight, we should continue to see development of this system as it tracks away to or begins tracking away to the southeast. Computer forecast models are in reasonable agreement over the next 24 to 48 hours of this southeastward track, but what it does in the longer term is what's up in the air, and oh, there might be a little bit of hype around the place about the system coming back towards southeast Queensland and whacking into the coast. Look, it's not going to do that as a cyclone. Uh, certainly not going to do that as a cyclone. What it might do is it might track a little bit more to the south, begin moving southwest, transition to an extratropical system, or completely weaken out. And then that completely weakened system System could be moving up here back into the northern coral sea now that is def definitely a possibility as is the possibility of a very very weak circulation continuing to track west across the queen across to queensland but look in both of these scenarios there is no chance of the system having much intensity as it does so so the system will be sheared away before it has any chance of actually making it onto the coast as a strong tropical cyclone or as any type of tropical cyclone. So it's a bit of a, if you're a gambling man, it's a bit of an even money bet as to which one it's going to do, whether it's going to do this uh, southward motion and then the remnants moving back to the northwest, or whether it's just going to go southeast and then continue into what I, what I call here the graveyard or the abyss of the southwest Pacific. I guess the one big thing to note there is there are some computer modelling that is pushing the tropical cyclone right over the top of New Caledonia and possibly affecting Numea as well as we go towards days three and four. And in our subscriber updates for our subscribers, we'll be talking a lot about that if the system starts to show more promise in doing that. But for our Aussie public updates, there's not too much more to say on that. 
The expected track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre puts the system as a Category 2 overnight tonight and into tomorrow remains a Category 2 cyclone as it tracks in this southeast and then southerly direction. There is a fair amount of disagreement that the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre does mention after about 24 hours as to what the system will do. Will it be absorbed by the upper level trough and continue moving in a southeast direction as an extra tropical cyclone? Or will it uh, start to push westwards and northwestwards as it weakens out and then is governed by the lower level flow which is going to push it back up north towards the Coral Sea or rather towards the central and northern Coral Sea. There is a fair amount of disagreement. There. No matter which option it takes, death is guaranteed. But will it die in the graveyard or will it die in the northern Coral Sea? Further to the east, we now have Tropical Cyclone Winston tracking between Vanuatu and Fiji. It's expected to move in a south-southeasterly direction and out into the graveyard as well, eventually uh, tracking in an easterly to northeasterly direction, way out here towards the date line. So at this stage, it poses no immediate threat to either Vanuatu or Fiji, but some of the most recent computer modelling is starting to push the centre of circulation much closer to Anitium here, the southern island of Vanuatu, and we'll have to keep an eye on that because they won't have too much warning if if the system does start to push in a more south to south southwest direction uh, than when than what is forecast here, which is a south to south southeast direction. But at this stage, this is the favoured direction here shown by the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre and also by the Fiji and Met Bureau. The system becomes a bit of a force to be reckoned with though because it does intensify out into a Category 3 severe system on both the Joint Typhoon Warning Centre and the Fiji and Met Bureau. So it's not going to be a bit of a play cyclone like... Uh, Tatiana is going to be. This one could be quite a serious feature, but at this stage, as I said, it's expected to track uh, just away to the east of Vanuatu, well west of Fiji. No chance of it hitting Fiji. And interestingly, in the longer term, this uh, little island here, Matthew, uh, very would be very interested, or any residents of that island would be very interested in the medium-term track of this system. You can see that there are still model outliers that do push this system over the southern parts of Vanuatu and that's why it needs to be watched very closely, particularly over the next 24 hours. If it starts to adopt a slightly more south-southwesterly track, then certainly the areas here in the southern part of Vanuatu are in the firing line. It's not going to hit New Caledonia, no chance of that, but uh, obviously New Caledonia will have to watch the one to the west, which is Tatiana. You can see in the long term the system tracking northeast on most of the computer model guidance and it could even uh, redevelop. If it does weaken out, it could redevelop in the long term and start to track back out here towards the southeast, uh, possibly out towards the Cook Islands. But we're talking a long way out there. Alright, checking out the rainfall forecast, we can still see showers and thunderstorms across the Northern Territory associated with that upper feature and a fairly moist flow right onto the coast. That doesn't extend too far to the inland though, they're much more isolated further inland. Some isolated showers and thunderstorms also around the Kimberley region and uh, conditions a little bit more scattered or showers and thunderstorms a bit more scattered up here in the North Peninsula as that monsoon builds up here through the Torres Strait and into the far northern Coral Sea region. Very isolated showers here along the Queensland coast in a south southeasterly airstream. Most of the activity will be uh, almost, if you like, sucked away towards Tatiana and will be left with a, a much drier south southeasterly flow than what we would normally have expected, which is a more southeast to east southeasterly flow, which would have brought in a lot more shower activity. As we go into Saturday, we have a slight increase in shower, shower activity up here off the southeast coast. Now, that could be in response to uh, a couple of things, uh, tightening pressure gradient in between the cyclone and the coast of Queensland uh, due to a high pressure, high pressure ridge building uh, creating a little bit of convergence here. It could also be due to a secondary, uh, secondary issue where some computer models are drifting the remnants of tropical cyclone Tatiana back out here to the southwest towards the southeast coast in a very very much weakened state. We also have the possibility here of that little rotating Vortice developing near Indonesia, and that what well, that's what enhances the rainfall up in this area. The Torres Strait is going off. The monsoon here is getting very strong. 25 to 30 knot winds are possible in this area, so some very much enhanced activity up here in the north. Across the Northern Territory, drying out almost everywhere except for the northwestern top end region as that upper trough moves away, uh, and we see southeasterly winds drying out the entire region. Also, so the possibility of some very isolated showers and thunderstorms in the Kimberley again on Saturday. On Sunday, same thing, isolated showers and thunderstorms, Kimberley, isolated showers 
and maybe a storm in the far northwestern parts of the top end. Still the Torres Strait going off with a good monsoon uh, and the coast of Queensland at this stage looks fairly clear uh, in a south to southeast airstream or south to south southeast airstream. As we go to Monday, we can see pretty well dry right across Queensland. The possibility of maybe an isolated shower or storm developing over the northwestern parts or northern inland parts, uh, but they will be extremely few and far between. Across the across the Torres Strait, we'll start to see a weakening of that monsoon. And we'll see a little bit of moisture returning to the North Kimberley here. So isolated showers and thunderstorms could become a little bit more frequent here. And we, we're not exactly sure what we're going to see here in the southern Indian Ocean. So we'll need to keep an eye on that uh, because some of the computer models are going a little trigger happy with a low pressure system in this area. So we will keep an eye on that. But at this stage, more of the reputable computer models don't do much with this. Also, the possibility of some isolated showers and thunderstorms in the Pilbara inland parts of the Pilbara. Unless you live in the Torres Strait, the next week is not going to be happy for you, rainfall-wise. Queensland's completely dried out because of Tatiana, uh, but the, as I said, the Torres Strait here, you can see the monsoon here really going off in terms of rainfall figures. It's actually really good to see because the area up here in the North Peninsula and the Torres Strait Islands themselves haven't received much in the way of really good monsoonal rain, so hopefully this will be a chance for them to cash in on some decent rainfall. They've sort of been too far north so far for every time the monsoon has come down a little bit and they haven't been enjoying some of that really heavy stuff that they're supposed to be getting this time of year. Anyway, showers and thunderstorms here across the northern and northwestern parts of the Territory and also the North Kimberley. Other than that, folks, it's pretty unremarkable over the next week. Look, we'll keep an eye on Tatiana. At this stage, I'm not planning on updating you again until next Thursday. So unless Tatiana starts to do something crazy, like starts to move west and actually remains quite intense, uh, then I won't update you again until next Thursday. Other, If it does do something crazy and, and starts to look like doing something crazy, well then I'll, start, I'll, I'll update you probably again on Saturday night or Sunday night. Similarly, I'll keep an eye on this Indonesian area too, so if that starts to do something crazy like spawning a, a really, really uh, fast developing low, uh, then I will also bring uh, an update forward as well for that. But at this stage, I don't plan on giving you another update until next Thursday. Subscribers, you'll have an update in the morning on both Tatiana, the possibility of a low up here, the low 99S, and also Winston. So you'll have all those updates in the morning tomorrow, and there'll be daily updates from then on. To become an OCC subscriber, head to ozcyclonechasers.com.au and click on subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great week. Talk to you next Thursday.